Hello and welcome to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Fenra. And tonight, we're reviewing That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Or, regarding reincarnating as a slime. It has been a long time since we recorded one of these. Yeah. I'm yeah. so, so happy to be able to get back into this. I'm happy to be back here too, dude. It's been 500 years. It seems about right. Oof. So. So what? I guess I should start with the description. I guess. This is the story of an ordinary man who was stabbed on the street and died, who got reincarnated in another world where he inherited the will of both the storm dragon Veldora and a human woman, giving him new purpose. Oh, I've been wanting to do this one for so long. I started following this, sh this anime, actually, about this time last year. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah. And... What was I watching this time last year? I don't even remember. Me neither. But, uh, I heard it was getting an anime, and I read the entire thing in one night, up to where it was, and I fell in love with the story immediately. It's another isekai, but trust me, this one's really good. I know! <laughs> it, it is, and I hate isekai anime. Oh... I'm sorry, I, it's just most isekai anime I'm not a huge fan of. There have been a lot of really good ones recently, actually. Huh. Uh, Calling me surprised. <clears throat> Overlord, The Saga of Tanya the Evil, I actually have the light novel of that one because I love it so much. Shield Hero, which is currently ongoing, is fantastic. Ooh, I haven't seen any Shield Hero, maybe later? Absolutely. I'd be up for it. So, that time I got reincarnated as a slime is based on a light novel series of the same name, written by Fuse and illustrated by Mitzvah. There are currently 14 volumes and four spin-off manga. That's a lot of shit. Yes. Well, this... we need to watch this wonderful series. This show is popular. Or, I should say, this series is popular. Very popular, by the sounds of it. Chapter 58 just came out a day ago. And, yeah, I've been keeping up with the manga ever since I started it. I haven't read any of the spin-offs yet, so I can't speak for those. But if it's anything like the main story, I'm going to love them. So I may have gone a little overboard for this review. Yeah, maybe just a tiny, but it's cool. It's been... A while since we've been here and you really like the show. I have yet to go overboard because I'm not uh, much for writing. I go overboard vocally. <clears throat> I've never written this much in my life. I've put more effort into th this one episode than I have in any of my school projects. I mean, that's just how it be. Oh boy. I... Okay, I took almost two pages of notes. That's not a whole lot, but that's a lot for me. So, <laughs> I'm going to talk about a little bit of the mechanics of the world and how our character finds himself there. So when, when people are summoned to the other world, they acquire unique abilities. Typically, when... People are summoned from our world to the other world. Uh, they are, well, summoned. It requires like 30 wizards and a couple days of spell casting to summon a hero to the other world. What's strange about our character is that he died and reincarnated as a slime in the other world, which apparently is not heard of, or hasn't been heard of in the show's lore. He's a special boy. Yeah, that's some, that's some Destiny shit right there. Some main character level shit. <laughs> oh yeah. So, our main dude gets stabbed in the street while defending 
one of his co-workers, and as he's dying, he complains about the heat that he's feeling from the stab wound. And we see this strange voice say that he has required heat resistance. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was funny. He complains about the pain from the stab wound and acquires stab resistance and physical attack resistance. He complains about the blood loss and acquires pain nullification. And the voice says it's developing a body for him that doesn't require blood. Complains about the, the cold and gets cold resistance. So on and so forth. Yeah. I like that he became OP just because he complained quite a bit. <laughs> oh, yes. Take that to heart. Complain and you'll get superpowers. Yeah, complain, <clears throat> get all the superpowers you could ever humanly want. Oh, I'd be unstoppable. Oh, yeah, me too. This is the best part, though. You know that saying that if you're a virgin until you're... Th like, 30, you become a wizard? Yeah, I've read that in lots of anime, actually. Yeah. And so... I love it. It's too <laughs> funny. Oh. He makes the observation that if a 30-year-old virgin is a wizard, then he, being almost 40, would be a sage. And then the voice says that he has acquired the skill Great Sage, which will be... <laughs> Just an asset to him in the future. I love Great it Sage is. so much. It's what makes him so OP in a good way. Yeah. I, I reiterate, he's OP in a good way. Which I know, rare sighting, they <sighs> exist. What are other good examples of good OP protagonists that you can think of? Uh, Dr. Tenma's kindness is OP, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's up there with stupidly kind. Yeah. Right? It's kind of ridiculous how nice he was. <laughs> Agreed? Yeah. Didn't it's... think we'd be talking about Monster in OP characters. I'm sorry, his kindness is just too <laughs> strong. <laughs> I was just gonna say something lame like Meliodas. Are they OP? I don't know him. Ah, uh, he's fr he's a uh, main character from Seven Deadly Sins. I haven't seen that. We will have to. I see. God, it's... Yeah, I... O other, like, OP-ass characters I'm thinking of are, like... Uh... Shit, what's that character's name? I'm trying to remember the friggin' anime. I'm upset about this. It was an act- some action anime? Wait, no, 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 it was a- it was a stupid harem anime. I think I remembered it now. Showman Sample. Ah. The main character was stupid overpowered because he- he was, as they refer to him, a commoner. And his commonerness made- well, and people made him OP in the commoner research society. Ah, yeah, I can see that. And it was hilarious. <laughs> he also states that because he was a virgin, he would go after every woman he could in the next life. <laughs> granting him the skill Predator, which <laughs> is f funny in itself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. But, God, <laughs> this series knows how to <laughs> fuck mm. To make fun of its protagonist, right? Oh, yeah. And we will talk more about the skills later, but... Oh. <laughs> this anime is very good at poking fun of itself. That's why I liked it, because it knew that most OPS isekai shit is just not amazing. There's even a point in the show where... Our main character runs into a very cliché anime moment, and he points it out. It's like, it's not gonna be one of these dumb, cliché anime moments, is it? And it totally is. Yeah. So, it, it, it still does the dumb, cliché anime moment, but it's made funny because he's pointing it out? Hmm. 
it's pleasant cliche anime moments. <laughs> don't know if it gets away with that for commenting on know. it, but I liked it. I, I found it refreshing that they acknowledged that it was kind of dull. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, he wakes up, can't feel his body, can't hear or see anything. He can feel, but... But he can't see. With his... What an unfortunate life. With his amazing deductive skills, he figures out that he must be a slime. Astute observations, MC. <laughs> And in his boredom, he decided to eat everything he could, using his skill, Predator. <laughs> That's still funny to me, by the way. Yeah. At first it's like, they did not. Using Predator, he can pretty much put anything in his stomach. Doesn't change his mass or size, but he's got like a pocket dimension inside of himself. Think Kirby. He Kirby's it up. He's like a Kirby who wants to fucking bang something. <laughs> I'm not wrong. No. <laughs> he eats a bunch of <clears throat> healing plants. He eats a bunch of magic stones. Talks to his great sage skill. Learns about the powers he has. And, and the powers that be, sort of. Learns how to hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. He runs into this giant dragon in the cave. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our homie, the dragon. Voldora, the Sundere dragon. <laughs> I cast Voldora, the Sundere dragon. Oh, Voldora's the best. Yeah, Voldora is the best. Been stuck there for like 300 years and has no one to talk to, just this giant lonely dragon in a cave. And this slime pops up. Doesn't know what's around him, can't see. All he can hear is his voice in his head. When he tries to answer, he can't. And in this frustration, calls the dragon a baldy. <laughs> which angers the dragon. Very funny. Very... <laughs> It angers the dragon for some... Wait, I don't get why it ain't... Why being called Baldy angered the dragon. It's not like he had any hair to begin with. Yeah. But... <laughs> but it was funny. It was. Dragon teaches him magic sense, gives him the ability to see his surroundings, and uh, they become buds. They blow it up? Oh yeah. The broiest of bros. They're such bros, they combine. Yeah, that was meant to be like that. <laughs> so, our slime friend finds out that the dragon has been stuck here for a very long time, thanks to a hero sealing him in there for destroying a town. Um, <laughs> it was totally an accident. Complete and utter accident. So, if he isn't let out of this barrier soon, he'll just die. Run out of ma magicules. No big deal. Yeah, just run out of mana. But then, our slime buddy has an idea. I'm gonna eat him. Gonna storm inside my stomach, and... I'm gonna eat him. Yes. Nom 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 nom. What is the word I'm trying to think of? Before? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to observe and dispel the barrier from the outside. But before doing so, the dragon names the slime. And this here is my favorite part about this world. I'm gonna talk a bit about this. Naming. I liked it too. Names were I'm shit. Very excited Names were the about shit. This. Names were the shit, dude. The dragon names the slime. And the slime is engulfed by a golden aura, which changes him on a molecular level. Level. Because when... the announcer said so. 
Which is also amazing, by the way. When monsters are named in this world by a creature stronger than them, they level up. They evolve. They get stronger. Names have so much meaning in this world. Most monsters aren't named. Being a named monster is like being a unique monster or boss monster in a video game. But I, as a person, put so much value in names. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you really do put value in names. It takes you, your RPG characters, your potential pets. I sometimes base an entire character around their name. Or their name. I, I'm very, very... Name-centric. Yes. Uh, everything has to have a meaning. Because names are all that we have. You're kind of right. They are kind of all that we have. I came here to enjoy the show. Not to... You're kidding, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Not to feel. Oh. So, a system like this in a show... Like this. It's so... I just love it so much. It's just so perfect to you. Yep. Okay. Rant over. Oh. Oh, naming. <laughs> naming is the best. Basically. I spend hours picking out names for my characters. Why I settled on Fat Man, you may never know. Hey, the unintentional comment is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Let's Oof. not talk about that. Not, not hilarious. <laughs> Oof. Sorry. Oh. Don't think about it. <laughs> or we edit that out. <laughs> nah. Feeling lazy today. So, our slime is named Rimuru. But he is asked by the dragon to come up with a family name because they share so close of a bond. And he thinks... What name would be befitting the Great Storm Dragon Veldora? Ah, Tempest sounds cool. Tempest sounds really cool. Yeah. What? Tempest? You, you don't like it? That's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> he, it's like, like it. I love it. Oh, Veldora's best dragon. Veldora is best girl. I don't know why I said best girl, because they're a dragon. Eh. Whatevs. But yeah, Veldora is the best. Yeah. I just, I love all of the characters in this show. Even the I really bad ones. I loved almost every character I met. Some of them I loved because I didn't like them. You know who. Oh yeah. That one butthole, whose name is escaping me. Gabiru? Yes. The Gabiru. egotistical lizard man? Yeah, him. The great Gabiru? Yeah, the not-so-great Gabiru. He's going to be the chieftain someday, you know. Guess who wasn't the chieftain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, feels bad. Well, it feels Gabiru, man. He did it to himself. Kinda had it coming. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So, we've mainly just discussed the first couple episodes so far. Yeah. There will be spoilers throughout, so this is your warning. Watch out for spoilers. They're coming. They are. They're, uh, <clears throat> probably coming in the next few sentences. Oh, yes. Probably. Can I think of any spoilers? Nope, put myself on the R spot. Rimuru's OP as shit, and he shoots lightning out of his body or something. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. What I like about this show is that they took one of the weakest monsters in video games. Slimes are typically what you find at the lower levels. Mm-hmm. And just made him work so well. He made slimes great. With his predator ability, he can absorb 
just about anything. That's because he's a pervert. Of course, he's oh. going to be able to observe, absorb everything. <laughs> yeah. And his inherent slime ability lets him mimic anything that he has absorbed. Meaning he can, for example, eat a spider and gain its ability to weave webs. Or absorb a an armored beast and gain its ability to create armor on itself. Basically giving him infinite potential. He, he, he's like an OP... I feel like he's more OP than Goku for some reason. <laughs> he, he's stupid busted and I love it. And he's not stupid with it. Yeah. He's not... He's not the typical neat that you see in isekai anime. He's a fairly intelligent Japanese businessman. Yeah, he's actually a smart man. Yeah. Respectable. Has sort a, of. <laughs> has a decent job. Really cool dude in general. Yeah. <laughs> Respectable. Of course, I say that now, but... You, you use the word loosely? With his dying breath... He asked that his computer hard drive be wiped. <laughs> uh, that's... I'd do the same thing, to be honest. Yeah... Yeah, I would to, too. To be honest, that isn't about respect. That's about the rest of the universe not finding shit out. <laughs> yeah. Hell, I respect him even more for that. <laughs> Cause let's be honest. People who use the internet are weird and do weird shit. Yes, and I love them all, except the ones I don't. Same. So, there's our starting point. Yeah. Where do we go from here? We could discuss his lovely... I love the way they had goblins. Yes, the goblins. I, lo I love the goblins. Also, speaking of goblins, Gobito's my homie. I love him. He's Gobta such a is... nice man. Gobta is best boy. There is best... no debating this. Bestest boy? Yes. He's so dopey. And In a good way. <laughs> he appears to be a comic relief character in the beginning. But he grows to be just this awesome dude. He gets strong, and... Oh. He gets powerful. A great and powerful Gobata. He actually bamboozles Gabaru. Oh, yeah. Despite his smaller stature, his... He bested Gabiru in a fight. Whooped his ass so hard that Gabiru thought Gabta was the secret boss of the monster village. That, that just... Gives me the giggles, dude. <laughs> but Gobta's a really cool dude as well, because I'm not thinking of any specific examples from the anime right now, but in one of the recent chapters, one of Gobta's friends was accused of being a pervert, and Gobta stood up for him and came out with the accuser with facts, and it was pretty satisfying. Yeah, do we ever find out who... Oh, wait, no, I'm not that far, dude. I only watched my anime. Yeah. There was a lot going on I had, you know? Yeah. So, back to goblins. Goblins. This... Goblins? You can go. I was just gonna say, goblins are, like, your gen... Not, not the goblin slayer goblins, but, like, they're more like the generic goblins. Yeah. Not was... the... Those goblins. Yeah. I was just about to bring up that this anime aired at an interesting time because it it aired in the same season as Goblin Slayer. We got to see two totally different depictions of goblins. Yeah. Between the two shows. Yeah, we did. And, and those goblins were... yeah. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that I like the reincarnated as a slime goblins a lot better. I think everyone prefers the reincarnated as a slime goblins better. Don't know. There's some weird people out there on the internet. Don't remind me, dude! 
That new Pokemon thing has proven it. Oh, that uh, Pokemon Sleep thing? No. Not oh. Pokemon Sleep. Uh, the announcements for Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield. Oh. What, uh, what has been going down in the world of Pokemon? Not much. They announced uh, the new um, professor. They announced the new professor's assistant. They announced the first grass gym leader. Oh, yes. And... Milo. That buff boy. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they uh, announced some shit. And, uh, not even... What, what felt like literally an hour later. Let me guess. There was porn? Yes. Literally like an hour later. Oh, internet, you never cease to amuse me. <laughs> I know what you mean, dude. That shit was funny. Like, I was on another Discord, and someone said something very, very true and appropriate. Yeah. Y'all playing with fire, making fucking NSFW art of a character before you know their fucking age. <laughs> when I heard them say that, I lost my shit laughing. <laughs> yeah, you might get in trouble with them Twitter people. Might get in trouble with a lot of people. <laughs> But, yeah, that shit just... Upon hearing that phrase, I busted out laughing. But, yeah, that's what's been going down in the world of Pokemon. Awesome. I'm not disappointed. Why would you ever be disappointed in the internet? <laughs> so Rumor leaves the cave, encounters some goblins that are having some troubles with the local dire wolves. The forest nearby the cave, the Great Forest of Jura, has been in an uproar since their great guardian dragon Veldora has gone missing. So Rumuru decides to step in and save them from the dire wolves, eventually, oh, one. eventually bringing peace to both tribes. And uniting them together as one. Yes! Here's another Michael. thing that I really love about this show. Dude starts okay. out with nothing, except some overpowered skills, but nothing. Yeah, nothing nonetheless. And starts a fucking town for monsters. Something that's never been done before in this universe. Well, there, there have been monster towns, monster clans and settlements, but this... Over the course of this show, we get to see this small encampment turn into a vast city of monsters. Set up trade routes and... All sorts of other stuff. And like... Trade routes, a full-blown city, and just, they build monster civilization. Yeah. Out in the woods. No humans, just <laughs> monsters and their, uh... Nice, full-blown, generic fantasy city. Diplomatic Ties. agreements and treaties with other countries. I love, like, diplomatic stuff in anime. In stories, in literature. I hate, I hate politics in real life. Yeah, That's just same. really boring to me. No offense into to anyone that is, like, really into politics. But, don't kill me. The diplomatic stuff in Star Wars Episode One was, like, my favorite part of the film. <laughs> but, like, moving on, though, but I, I just love that he just made the entire region happy. Yeah. As a <laughs> former businessman, he's pretty good at bringing Settling people to agreement. Yeah. Only the best agreement settler, slimy, slimy boy comes into contact with another otherworlder, as they're called, people from other worlds, that uh, was from Japan and was summoned during w World War II, was it? What? Well, yeah, it looked like World War II. Yes. She was pulled out of a... Firebombing. Yes. Thank you. She was pulled out of a firebombing in World War II into our world and infused with the... Great Fire Spirit Ifrit. I think that's kind of a little bit messed up, though. Yeah. 
But no, no, I love the show anyways. I was just pointing out that if you think about that hard enough, that's kind of screwed up. Oh, yes. She's just been traumatized by her town, her home, everything she's ever loved being destroyed, set on fire. And she's suddenly in another world and been given fire powers. The power of what has just destroyed her life. Yeah. That's really messed up. Didn't think about it? No, or now that it definitely came to mind. Mm. But then she's forced into servitude under the demon lord Leon. But Rimuru encounters her, this is many years later, and yeah. they're like, they get all chummy and talk about Japan and how things got better after the war. And that was really, really cool to see. After That's a really wholesome. He showed her, like, the city skyline of Tokyo after he accidentally showed her his elf porn, but... <laughs> Forget about that. <laughs> this isn't about elf porn. <laughs> Unless we want it to be about elf porn. Oh, yes. Kidding. Oh, oh, yep, yep, kidding. I just... It, if I talk about the entire show going from plot point to plot point, we will be here all night. Yeah, we will be here all night, my dude. I mean, I love the anime. I'm just saying we don't want to be here all night. <laughs> kidding. Yeah. It's it's fine. You enjoy it. I Thank enjoyed you. it. Let's talk about some of the stuff I enjoyed. You you, you had multiple watches. I are... seriously watched this anime about five times through for this review. It's way more times than I did. Oof. Is, is there such a thing as liking something too much? No. I mean, there are some things that I quite enjoy. Because I might have a problem. Potentially excessively. <laughs> but I see nothing wrong. Awesome. I have well, been talking a whole lot. Please, talk about something that you like about the show. Okay, so what I really like... The setting's super duper unique, and I really love the characters. You know? Like, it's not every day we get a isekai anime where every creature's actually sentient and gives a hoot yeah which is refreshing because usually it's like oh hey this is a monster and monsters are bad kill the monsters humans are the, the monsters <clears throat> but yeah it's really refreshing to me that the monsters are sort of neutral forces just and the adventurers are kind of made out to be kind of bad guys yeah, it's very much just gray instead of black and white. Yeah, and I like that with a lot of the anime and stuff I enjoy. Because in every race, in every faction, there's always the good people and the bad people. Yeah. Like, like there's always extremists. Absolutely. But that does, doesn't necessarily represent the entire group. Yeah. It does not represent the group in its entirety. Yeah. Because there are definitely some good... Most of the monsters in this are good. There are good people and bad people, just as there are good monsters and kinda bad monsters. Hell, there are even good demon lords, which I wasn't expecting. That's actually really sweet, is that there's good <laughs> demon lords. Yeah, most of them are just ancient, like, immortals yeah. or just long-living people that are bored. They're not necessarily evil or good. They're just looking for something fun to do. They're which... just bored immortals. Yeah. Which actually kind of reminds me of the Daedra from the Elder Scrolls series. <laughs> yeah. Because they're, they're mostly deemed as, like, evil entities with dominion over certain things yeah yeah there are some demon lords who will just do some stuff for the hell of it <laughs> no be it each of them have various domains but then there are some lesser sort of ones that are not that shitty actually 
like Nocturnal, whose domain includes thievery and the poor. And then there's one who's just debauchery and revelry. He's a fun time. My favorite Daedric Prince is uh, Shiagorath. I love Shiagorath. Who doesn't love Who doesn't love Shiagorath? He's just kind of crazy, looking for a good time. But, well, he's the Prince of Madness. He better be crazy. And then there's his counterpart, who is also interesting, Jigalag, who is a uh, of order. And then there was, and then like every couple of hundreds of years, Jigalag tries to take over, <laughs> and he constructs things just right, so he gets to continue his madness. Wonderful. It's great. <laughs> I love Shao Gorath. But yeah, the Demon Lords just sort of come off as, like, Shale Gorath or other Daedra, you know? Yeah. They sort got... of come off like the Daedra. Some of them have their own agenda and are seeking power, but others are just taking things day to day, and that's really cool. Yeah. Like, wait, would you count Rimuru a Demon Lord? I don't think so. He's powerful enough to be of their ranks. But is Demon Lord an evolution, or is it just a title? Yeah. Haven't figured that out yet. Ooh, spicy. That means there's more to learn. Oh, yes. One of my favorite things to do in watching a a new show or series is to theorycraft. Theorycrafting's the shit, dude, you know? Oh, yeah. I... Just have a lot of time to think about stuff. I mean, so do I. When you got the time to think, you think an awful lot. Yes. So, do you have any theories about the show? I... I have a sneaking suspicion I know which direction it's gonna go. Hmm. I... Here's what I think's gonna happen. And correct me... No, this is just based on what I've seen. Yeah. I think he, all of those kiddos who he gave spirit forms are gonna grow up. Well, that's kind of a given, but... Yes! They'll live! But they all grow to, like, be demon lords and stuff and take after his advice. And it'll just be, like, try and beat up the other ones. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. That'd be cool. I actually have a theory about the Great Sage, who we've brought up before, but haven't really talked about in depth. The Great Sage is one of Rimuru's skills that allows him to talk to this voice in his head, ask it questions about how the world works or how his skills work. He can even ask it questions about things that he has experienced, stuff that is stored within his mind that he can't particularly remember. He asked it to pull from memory all of the mangas he's ever read and put them onto paper, and it did it. Which is beautiful, by the way. All that manga. Just think about it. It's just all that awesome manga. Picture for picture, word for word. I couldn't remember all that. Rumoru couldn't remember all of that, but it was stored in his mind and Great Sage pulled it out. Yeah, it's like, oh, I remember this shit. And it's beautiful. So I have a theory about the Great Sage. Mm. Or in the first episode of the show, as our character is dying, the voice is describing the acquisition of his skills... And it was the same voice as the one Great Sage had. But he hadn't acquired Great Sage yet. But we were hearing Great Sage's voice. Yeah. So why could we hear Great Sage's voice before he obtained it? And he only reacts to hearing the voice in his head after he had obtained the skill himself. Yeah. But it was still Hmm. talking beforehand. So, bit of a stretch here, but my theory is that the Great Sage is a skill that allows him to tap into 
the consciousness of reality itself that is it's just always there but he can only access because he has the skill great sage yeah that is my current theory on the matter current reigning theory on the matter yes let's see um what's your favorite part of the anime my favorite part of the anime yeah my favorite part of the anime is the part where um when they go to the city i love that the human city or the dwarf city the dwarf city okay also, every single scene with the students of the lady <laughs> whose name is escaping me. Because let's be real, this is all about Yamaru. Yeah. Shizu. Yeah, Shizu. Our homegirls. Shizu. And just the way the students learn to accept him is pretty, and I love it. Yeah. He fights them. I think my favorite part of the show is when Rimuru first encounters the ogres. I I loved it in the manga, I loved how they did it in the anime, and I have legitimately watched that scene 20 plus times. Just... Love Rim every second of it. Rimuru owning five goblins, and them just being surprised at how strong he is. He, and his he, genuine surprise. He's even surprised at how strong he is. But he's surprised every step of the way, and it's great. He tries intimidation against them by showing his great power, and it backfires, and they try to go all last stand against him, sacrificing their lives. <laughs> Thinking he's this great evil overlord. Nah, fam. Just one slimy boy. This this anime has great references in it, too. Yeah, it really does, like... There was even a Harry Potter reference. Was there? I think. All <clears throat> the robes he gave of the tro gave the children looked like Slytherin robes. <laughs> that, that probably felt... That feels intentional, dude. Maybe hinting at them being evil, I don't know, but it was great. Makes reference to Dragon Quest, quoting the slime. Wait, Not a bad slime. slime. That's funny. He's just a neutral slime. I can't remember if it was in the anime, but in the manga, when he is recreating all of these uh, manga for uh, from memory for the kid in the human city he mentions a bunch of popular ones including full metal alchemist he mentions a lot of manga even some i've seen and it was it was fantastic <laughs> it's like wait i was like wait i know these shows yeah but i do have one gripe with the show what's your gripe with the show I was looking forward to a lot of the stuff I liked in the manga being animated. But unfortunately, they cut so much content from the show just to catch up to the most recent chapter. And although most of the cut content was character interactions, I just... It's a lot of stuff I wanted to see. And initially... It had me mad because I thought we'd have to wait another three, four years for another season. But season two has actually been confirmed already. I guess they're going off of the light novels to make. Which is a good call, actually. Some of my favorite anime go off of light novels or visual novels. Visual novels, I feel, are the second hardest to adapt besides games. Like, Oh my lord, I love I love me a good long visual novel. But yeah, dude. Slime was great. Gobuta's my homie. Also the I didn't watch the dub. How was the dub? Oh boy. I well, having watched both, I still prefer the sub. I just think the voices suit the characters a bit more, and I Generally don't really have too many complaints about the subs, because 
I'm not a Japanese speaker, and I don't know Enough. what sounds good in Japanese or bad. It just sounds like the characters. Yeah. I did, however, really enjoy the dub. I mean, it's a good dub. Like, I haven't heard it, but is it a good dub? Yeah, it is a good dub. And Excellent. My most recent watch through was in the dub, and it was pretty enjoyable because I could just concentrate on other things while listening to it. And catching up because it was a long bit of time between recording and watching. Yes. One thing caught me by surprise, however. What? I I was listening. I was I was playing a mobile game on my phone and listening to the anime and Gaburu was fighting that orc general and I was thinking it wait that 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 orc sounds like Eggman oh my god that's Eggman the English voice actor for the goblin general is Mike Pollock the the vo- voice actor for Eggman in the the Sonic series yeah, I know the Sonic. Unfortunately. <laughs> mostly through memes and other things I've partaken in reading. So that now... I don't care to share. <laughs> so now I can't stop thinking about Eggman as this giant orc general. It's a very funny image in my head. I mean, it's a great image in your head. I love everything about that image. Dr. Eggman as an orc general? <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. Eggman. Egg! Oh my god, fucking eggs, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> Video game characters and eggs. Oh god, this this would start a tangent. Because you said egg, which reminded me of a character from Dragon Age. Yeah. Because he's bald and sort of has an egg-shaped head. I can send you a picture. Later. Yeah, later. I'll send you a picture later. But it, when you, whenever at one point in the game he does something like major to you. Hmm. So I'm at the point where every time I see an egg now, I sort of get a little bit upset. <laughs> Just thought thought I'd let you know. Every time I see anything remotely egg shaped, I get a little bit upset. <laughs> it has to do with many many choices. Those who are in the know will know what I mean. But fuck you, Solus. I trusted you. <laughs> but one part f- from the manga that I really, really wanted to see animated was unfortunately cut. That sucks. Rimuru went to the human city and applied for an adventurer's license. Oh, that sounds funny. It was! And they're like, you're a new adventurer and I've never heard of you before, so we're just gonna give you a basic license. But no, no, I wanna, want a, uh, a better license. Well, then we're gonna test you for that and just... Saitama's his way through the test? <laughs> pretty much. Oh yeah, Saitama's another great Oki character. Oh yeah. Least recognizable. One Punch Man was fun, a fun watch. I remember watching it back in the day when it came, originally came out. Yeah, I, I kind of got bored of it initially. Same. <laughs> but then people said it was good, and I watched more of it. And it was. So the people have not led you astray? For the most part. That's good. I've led no one astray as far as I can remember. Maybe. Well, you did make me watch Fooly Cooly, so... Hey, Fooly Cooly is amazing. You're a liar. Y- you are a wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> How you don't like Fooly Cooly is beyond me. I don't know. It... <laughs> oh. Is it because it doesn't make sense? I don't know. I mean, so be I've, honest. I've watched stuff before that doesn't make sense, and I've liked it. But Fooly Cooly is a special kind of weird. And I love it. <sighs> Fooly Cooly is like 
you're watching something on 2 a.m. and you wake up and you think you're fucking hallucinating. <laughs> and I love it. But I think... Oh, yeah, let's talk about, like, the soundtrack and animation, which was shockingly good. Yes. Animation, shockingly good. Good <laughs> use of 3D. Good use of CG. What was... There was CG yet? I didn't even realize. Oh, yeah. In in the first episode, when Rumuru was trying to figure figure out what he was, there was that slime animation and the animation by the Great Sage to show him how his predator skill works. Oh, shit. You're right. I, 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 I'm remembering it. Sorry, it was a while since I last saw it. Oh, it's fine. Well, since I saw it. They're just, like, short cut-ins of CG stuff that is so... I, I loved it. Simple yet effective. I didn't notice too much other CG in the show. It, it was heavily used during the scenes with the armies of orcs. But it was... It was kind of subtle. The CG orcs were behind the... Non-CG orcs. And there was layers of dust, and you really only noticed if you were paying close attention, and that is how you use CG. In an anime, because otherwise it looks kind of weird. Yes. I'm okay with this use of CG. Moving on. Yeah. Soundtrack-wise, yeah. oh. uh, the first OP is my favorite of the two. It's Nameless Story by... Takuma Terashima. And I liked every OP I saw, but I'm a strange person. So, get this. When the show started airing and using the, the animation for the first OP, it teased a fight that had not yet happened in the manga. Wait, really? Yes. So, there's this new character fighting Rimuru in the first opening that... I had never seen before. I was really confused. And then, like, a week or two after the anime stopped airing, after the, that first OP had been out of my mind for a while, Rimuru fights that character in the manga. That Holy is crap, the coolest. That's some, that's some good shit. Yeah. Light novel fucking manga spoilers in the OP? Yes. That OP was more spoiler-tastic than JoJo's. <laughs> and JoJo OPs live on spoilers, it feels like. The ED at the end of episode 14, I think it was the last time they used that ED. They moved on to a different one after that. It's just a recap of all the other episodes. Rimuru is just happily bouncing through all of his memories up to this point, and I actually cried watching that. I mean, it's adorable, and I, it's kinda nice and I, wholesome. I cried watching it the first time, and the second time, and the third time. You're a sensitive boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sensitive. You're a nice dude. <laughs> oh. I didn't cry, though. <laughs> I'm a steely... I, I'm a person who rarely cries during most anime, if that uh, makes sense. Yeah, I get you. But I think I have covered most of what I wanted to talk about, and holy crap, we've been recording for two hours. I mean, there was a lot of silence, though. Yes, but this is going to be the longest episode we've ever had. Jesus Christ! I am really looking forward to editing this one! I'm not. Oh. It's gonna suck. Oh. But I do this because I love sharing my thoughts with people. You do. We love sharing the stuff that we're passionate about. Absolutely do. Speaking of anime we're passionate about... Oh, you know, no, 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 hold on. I'm... Fuck. <laughs> I was about to lead into the next episode thing, but I'm trying to decide about what we should do. Okay, let me wrap this one up real quick. 
Yeah. Anyway, if you want to watch that time I got reincarnated as a slime for yourself, you can catch it on Crunchyroll and watch, Funimation. Watch that Chinese cartoon. Yes. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The Night Parade has now come to an end. Next week, Mysterious Girl Fendant. <laughs>